What is up guys? Welcome back to MD Disc Golf. Today we have something exciting. You guys have probably already seen some reviews of it, but we have Focus, come on baby. The Simon Line disc, um, the time lapse. So as a bunch of people have probably said and you've seen, uh, they say this thing has some beef. Uh, we're gonna go and test that out and see if that's really, really true today or if you know people just kind of have weak arms. Yeah. I'm assuming that it's probably true, but. And just to uh, you know verify that, we got some, you know, we're both engineers, we gotta do some testing, right? Mm -hmm. So I got some of the more stable distance drivers that I have. I don't typically throw that often, but it will bring out for the wind is the most stable Star Destroyer that I have ever thrown. And then a Lia 264 Rive, which they know they beat in per, to be pretty workable for a lot of people. But for me, this one is very stable uh, and I only have it in the bag, both of these only in the bag for those really windy shots. Yep. And then I have the uh, Lone Star Discs Warbird in the Bravo Plastic, um, 172 gram. So this one's going to be the most overstable or one of the most overstable plastics for Lone Star Discs. So we're gonna put the Simon line up against these other three and uh, we're gonna see what happens. So let's get into it. Let's have a lot of fun and uh, we'll tell you our verdict at the end. All right. So uh, we're gonna throw the time lapse first. Uh, just throw it on a nice flat uh, backhand throw, and uh, we'll see see kind of what it can do. Out of curiosity, because we did talk about the weight for the uh, your Warbird, what is uh, what's the weight on that? So the weight on this is 174 grams. Okay. Um, so I did hear somebody say that the difference in the weights kind of affected the dominus. Uh, this thing does have a pretty nice dome on it. Mm -hmm. for MVP and uh, also we gotta just comment these colors and all of the time lapses that I've seen are just sick Absolutely. The, like the stamp on it looks amazing nice and simplistic super cool and then I absolutely love the marbling um, of the over mold it just absolutely looks incredible but you guys are here to watch us throw these discs and uh, that's what we're gonna get into Colin is a little bit of an MVP simp I do love MVP Nice. That thing's got some beef. Yeah, I'd sure. say so. All right, now we got the Warbird. I'm gonna do the same thing, throw it nice and flat. And uh, as you can tell, the Warbird has a little bit more of a dome. It is a 12.5, or 12.6, six. Six, negative one three. So it boasts a little bit more glide, so you'd then assume a little more dome. Nice and flat on the Warbird also. Still pretty stable. So it was a little, definitely nose up, but uh, you know, very, very overstable disc. Yeah, but still usable. Yes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the destroyer first. Um, my brother was telling me um, that this is apparently one of the more stable runs of destroyer. I don't throw destroyers all that often. Um, my experiences with them have typically been like pro or like lower plastics. I do love the feel of it. It's just, we'll, we'll see. It's, I, it's, from what I remember, it's pretty stable. And throw it nice and flat. Yeah, you can see I I early released that and that was definitely on Heiser, but like that had no intention of doing anything but being stable, Heisering out the entire time. So now go ahead and throw the Rive. Um, I don't think this one is nearly as stable, um, but definitely, like I said before, it's something like typically only have in my bag for those stable shots. So yeah, a little bit of wobble on that, um, but still nice and stable, um, super reliable for those headwinds. I get to throw this thing for the first time. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead, cause I, I do favor the hyzer. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on hyzer and see how much I can get to push because one really nice thing and something that's really indicative of a good overstable distance driver is not something that's just gonna dump. Something like for a slower arm speed players, you know, obviously this is gonna be something that's great for a pro like Simon, but for us amateurs, we're definitely gonna want something that pushes more 
still cover some distance rather than just being needlessly overstable. So I'm gonna throw that in hyzer, um, my typical angle, and then just see how far I can get it to push. Yeah, I would say that, so I definitely feel like I got a hold of that a little bit better than I did with those other two discs. Um, I th that came out really fast, it feels very fast. And I can notice that too, when I was holding it, it felt a little bit more aggressive around the rim, um, which is kind of a weird concept, but it's something that it's like hand feel felt very aggressive. But that definitely came out with a lot of speed. And that's something that even though I'm not turning that over, I'm definitely gonna be able to still use that as an amateur player. All right, so Carson just demonstrated the hyzer with the time lapse. Uh, you know, Carson and I's games are pretty complimentary. He's a, you know, hyzer to flat kind of player. That's what he favors. I am an anhyzer to flat kind of player. I love, you know, flex lines. You know, s throw something nice and flat straight at the basket. Throw a flex line straight at the basket. Um, so that's what we're going to demonstrate now. A nice uh, anhyzer flex line with the Simon line. See how much it really, really wants to fight out. Got some juice behind that. Man, that I think that thing does have some stability. Yeah. So it definitely, you know, started. That was just a slight anhyzer, so it started to want to go right, but then very quickly, you know, started coming back left. It did push though really well. Um, that is one thing. If you rip this disc hard enough, it wants to ride straight and then dump at the end. Um, so I think overall it's a you know, a lot of people almost hype it up as so beefy that you can't even really throw this disc. I think this is going to be a perfect, you know, overstable, out of, you know, off the shelf, and then really, really beat into a nice workable, uh, like, long bomber disc. You know, especially if, you know, the production runs are slightly less stable than these prototype runs, which we've kind of heard rumors about. But overall, I think it's, this is going to be a really great disc. Yeah, absolutely. So we've done flat, we've done hyzer, we've done anhyzer. You know, one thing we haven't really seen a ton of is the forehand. So, uh, you know, having a nice forehand disc is very, very important. So we're going to see how well the Simon line time lapse can handle my forehand. Let's do it. Oh, there she goes. Very nice. That is cranked out there. Yeah, that is uh, normally a disc thrown like that. We get a really, really nice turn, you know, starts to wobble, you know, stables up, gets a nice turn and then comes back hard. You know, that one, you know, had the wobble. It turned slightly, but then really, really wanted to get back to the right. Uh, that thing's really stable, really, really good you know, forehand, power forehand disc. That thing is pretty sweet. All right, guys, so we just got done throwing the time lapse. Um, beautiful disc. And yes, the rumors are true. This is a very beefy disc, but mm -hmm. you know, definitely still a usable disc. Um, you know, this is gonna be the disc you pull out when, you know, you need something that pushes, but definitely finishes for right hand, backhand, left. You know, it finishes stable, it fades out at the end, um, you know, something reliable, especially these proto runs. I'm not sure how, you know, the stock runs are going to be, but, mm -hmm. you know, overall, I think, for my play style at least, I think it's going to be a very usable, workable disc. What do you think, Carson? Well, the one thing that I noticed that I really liked is, um, especially looking at the two discs that I threw, this Destroyer and the, uh, the Rive, um, both of those really had a lot more stability throughout the entire flight. Uh, the time lapse definitely like to push. It seemed like it pushed straighters a, a tad bit longer. I feel like out of the box because those are both a season just slightly. I feel like this is definitely for this proto run is just a slightly bit more usable. Like we were throwing these probably between that 370 380 um, like area, which is still pretty good distance, especially being amateurs. Like I think my max distance on a Heiser Flex line is 420. So 
I mean, something a little bit shorter than that, but still like super reliable is something you're always gonna be able to count on, especially you start getting into a headwind. So I, I'm definitely of the opinion that this is gonna be a disc that regardless of your play style or your level of experience, you just, it just has use. This absolutely has use. I know some people and reviews don't think that, but I love this thing, it's awesome. You know, it's definitely not going to be, you know, your absolute, especially for amateurs, not going to be your absolute max distance disc where, you, you know, you can flex line, like get a full turn and then come back kind of disc, um, you know, but this is going to be still a bomber, but still very, very reliable. Um, so, yeah, I definitely love this disc. Carson seems to really love this disc. So, uh, yeah, we can't wait for the stock runs and, uh, you know, comment down below what... You know, if you are able to get your hands on it, um, you know, what do you think? Yeah, let us know if you guys have got a chance to throw one. Um, they're awesome. Yep. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next time. See you guys.